Good afternoon to you. Mark Zadath, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, April the 3rd, 2017. Happy beginning of the week to you. It's uh, April now, and so that means we are less than 60 days away from the hurricane season beginning, and we have a lot to talk about. We're going to start adding more stuff, more content to talk about, different graphics and different predictions. In fact, I'm going to touch upon that at the end of today's uh, update, uh, something coming out this week, in fact, from Colorado State University. So let's get rid of me for a second. There's the opening slide. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you guys. All right, so let's start with the sea surface temperature anomalies for uh, this week for today. Let's get a good color here. I guess we can use red, and let's make sure it's nice and thick. And so you see, this area here has been really causing some trouble over the last few weeks. Uh, you've heard about the rainfall and the terrible mudslides here and flash flooding along the west coast of South America. But this is starting to change. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, this area is very volatile and susceptible to change uh, over a short-term period. The rest of the Pacific here... Uh, you see some cooler waters out here in the central Pacific along the equatorial region. And the Atlantic, kind of cold here right in the heart of the MDR, the main development region. And overall, the subtropics, the, the Atlantic, uh, for deep tropical development, where, and what does that mean? Well, basically these Cape Verde storms that come off and come all the way over, maybe like this, a lot of them curve out, of course, and some of them reach the United States. This does not look favorable for that to be very prolific. I'm not saying we won't have any, but this is not the type of pattern that seems to favor that. Um, it could change. Hey, it's only April. What will this look like on September 3rd, as an example? You just never know, right? So keep that in mind, though. This is not quite the favorable look for a very busy season. Nevertheless, the Gulf of Mexico, with the exception of this weird blue area, is still way above normal. Um, you know, we have the very warm temperatures here just off the east coast, but even the western Atlantic and the southwest Atlantic has anomalously cooled. Just a fancy way of saying that it has gone below the long term average uh, over the last, well, you know, couple of weeks or so. We've seen a pretty big change. Uh, so I want to show you something else, though. Let's look here at the, get to my next window, broader picture of the Pacific and I want to point this out here is your equatorial region all the way across there's the very warm water in the extreme eastern Pacific but notice that we do have this pretty large area and there are some deeper blues showing up uh, this is getting more towards the Nino 4 area than really the Nino 3 and the Nino 3.4 what is he talking about? Well, the basin here is divided up into these different regions. And roughly speaking, you have like your Nino 1-2 area, uh, your Nino 3 area, the your Nino 4 area, and kind of in the middle is what we call the Nino 3.4 area. Kind of like a Venn diagram, but not exactly. And it's just a way to divide up the vastness of the Pacific to understand how what we call the El Nino Southern Oscillation, or ENSO, is working and so right now you know the equatorial region here in the central almost to the western pacific a little colder uh, than normal with the eastern pacific warmer so the two maybe they cancel each other out and it's just kind of neutral overall uh, i don't know it's very interesting to see how things evolve i will say this remember what i told you that we want to keep an eye on the subsurface and i pointed out in my last update that the area here just off the coast of South America was very, very warm. Well, it's still quite warm, but we've lost a lot of that deep red. Uh, if you remember, it was way over here on the right side of the scale, and now we're starting to sort of chisel away at that. Also, we're sort of blooming up some uh, colder anomalies here in the Central Pacific. We still have this bowl uh, sort of carved out here with the edges of it warm, but not in the middle. So it's interesting, and now I'm starting to see people kind of backing off. You know, well, the El Nino is going to come on, you know, maybe later on in the fall uh, or late summer. I, it's interesting to see people hedging their bets a little bit based on some of this information. Well, the trade winds have gotten a little stronger. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, people were jumping all over that Euro that was showing the big spike, and yeah, there still might be an El Nino, but... This tells me, I mean, come on, we're almost into April here on this graphic. Uh, 
it's going to have to hurry if it's going to do it to significantly affect the hurricane season. But, you know, we're going to talk more about that as we get closer, that, you know, don't worry about the overall numbers. We need to know what the pattern could be like. We could have five named storms, I'm just saying, as an example, and if three of them hit the United States as significant hurricanes or a tropical storm and two hurricanes or something, then it could be really devastating. You just never know. I don't want to keep preaching the it only takes one uh, because it could be two or three in a year where you only have five or six total. That's possible. So we'll talk about that later, though. We're not quite there yet. So let's take a look at the actual sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. They've changed the color bar as of late, just the way everything evolves. So now the uh, 26 degrees Celsius line, which was yellow, is sort of this weird green color, but I'll outline it for you. 26 Celsius is roughly the temperature needed to sustain tropical activity. It can go lower than that, depending on what the middle layers of the atmosphere are doing, but for our arguments here and for this discussion, pure tropical cyclones need roughly 26 C, and there's the line, you know, my little isotherm there. Everything south of that, and look at the Bay of Campeche down here. Uh, there's the yellow showing back up. That's 27, and then the orange right here, just a couple of patches, but they are there, 28 degrees Celsius. And if you know your conversion, it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. What about the Gulf of Mexico up along the uh, shoreline and the uh, shelf water area? Most people's spring break per se is over, but you got Easter break coming up. And so how are things progressing? Well, down here in South Padre Island in extreme south Texas, coastal waters, Corpus Christi and Point South, and Padre Island as a whole, water temperatures in the mid to upper 70s getting there. Rest of the Gulf, you're getting some of these blues eroded away, and these greens will creep in as everything warms up. Remember, the Gulf of Mexico, we go back to this shot over here, is running above the long-term average and to quite a bit uh, above so here in the western gulf and that's feeding something that we'll talk about there's a lot to talk about today in just a moment east coast yeah, no real major changes here again some colder anomalies as i was showing you showing up out in this area you can't really pick them out on this particular map because this is not an anomaly map this is showing the actual temperatures and what's nice is you can see the gulf stream here and you can also see that pretty strong tight gradient temperature gradient between the warm water and the cold water over on the east coast along the mid-atlantic states uh, so no major surprises no concerns one way or the other just kind of pointing it out as things progress you know that these temperatures will be nice and warm by the time we get to september they always are all right so let's leave the tropics just for a minute i'm going to come back and i want to look at lower 48 weather and i want to make sure people are aware and I like this up here says the weather ready nation right there that's very important that we are aware we have so many distractions and there's a lot of active weather going on we've seen the tremendous flooding and severe weather in parts of louisiana mississippi texas now that's moving into georgia and really across the deep south here under the gun and it's just going to get worse from here i hate to be the bearer of bad news but i want you to be aware this is the hpc uh outlook and for today let's just look at the outlooks per se the um east part of uh we'll call it the southeast part of the country the carolinas georgia parts of the florida panhandle in an enhanced risk slight risk etc basically this active pattern really starting to take shape here and these are the states that are going to be impacted today and tonight and then it's going to kind of reset the system back into well not so much this area uh, i'll show you on the gfs in just a moment and in fact let's look at that uh, from an outlook basis uh, on the spc charts here this is day one so this is valid today so here it is for tuesday tomorrow you start to see that it, again starting to reset the system there with these pieces of energy coming across like little bowling balls i've heard people refer to them like that and unfortunately we are the pins and uh, these are gonna i hate to not trying to have a comedic analogy but yeah we're getting knocked down with some of this stuff and it is a dangerous active pattern one that we have not seen for several years and finally the day three outlook if we move out towards the middle of the week 
Um, this is concerning to me, okay? So this is valid. Um, let's see when it's there, there, there. When is it valid? Updated. Oh, come on. It's got to tell me when it. All right. Yeah, right there. Sorry. Uh, I'm used to looking at hurricane graphics, so bear with me. So this is valid on the 5th uh, into the 6th, okay? So today's the 3rd. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 4th. So this is Wednesday into Thursday. So Wednesday to Thursday, this is the area. We could be looking at a substantial, extremely dangerous, severe weather outbreak. All right? So you need to be paying serious attention if you're in this area. So if you know people, share the video with them. Say, look, see what the guy said, and then take it upon yourself and encourage others to learn more about this risk. Okay? I am not... Dr. Greg, Greg Forbes at the Weather Channel. You know, I'm not a severe weather expert per se, but I want to point you in the right direction. Hey, it's coming, potentially, so please be aware of that. Uh, what's the driver of it? Check this out. This is the 500 millibar over the next five days. I'm going to start the animation here. These are the pieces of energy coming through these uh, vortices in the atmosphere at the 500 millibar level. And look at that. It trough energy right there. Wow, this is getting close to Wednesday, Thursday time frame. Potentially a very strong East Coast storm coming up out of it. This is the energy that's moving through today and tonight. And not nearly as potent as what we have here coming in towards the latter part of the week. So really, really pay attention to this. I'm going to let it go through one more time. I'm going to pause it. Wednesday into Thursday, a dangerous time for the southeast. I'm going to say it again. Please be ready for that. You see it coming in here, that energy rotating around. And look at that. By the time we get into... Uh, this would be Thursday into the evening hours. Let's back up just a couple of frames. So Wednesday into Thursday, look at that energy right there. Not good. So please, please, please pay attention to that, all right? I will be traveling once again. I just got back from Mississippi State University where I was a speaker at the uh, Mississippi State Severe Storms Symposium, their 15th annual. Now I'll be getting on a plane tomorrow to go to Texas and get ready for what we see here, the, as you can see down there, right, the uh, National Tropical Weather Conference. So let me get rid of me, and I want to talk about this for just a moment. This is a fantastic conference, not similar necessarily to the National Hurricane Conference. It's different. That's what I'm trying to say. How so? This is more geared towards the media. And I think that is extremely important because who's going to be talking to you most during a hurricane? The media, usually, right? And they need to be on the same page. They need to have a consistent message. And they need to be able to hear from the experts. And you see quite a list of people that will be speaking at this year's conference. And, in fact, it's so big that there are two pages of it. And this is the second page. There's yours truly. Uh, very honored to be able to uh, be speaking about uh, this year. I'll talk about Hermine and Matthew, um, you know, Brian Norcross from the Weather Channel, a legend uh, from Hurricane Andrew. Remember that? That's really what put him on the map. Uh, and we'll hear from other folks, including uh, Josh Morgerman. And hey, you know what? If you like the, uh, the radar scope, uh, I am very excited to be able to hear from this guy, uh, Mike Wolfenbarger. And uh, WDT, which is behind Radar Scope, I do believe. That's going to be awesome. But then we get to hear from Josh Morgerman, of course, from iCyclone and Jamie Rome, etc. Ed and Rob and the Low Country of South Carolina. Just a great, great lineup of people to really kind of help uh, any emergency management people that come in. Uh, and there will be some. But you know, the media being able to hear from these experts, including... Those of us that are out in the field, such as myself and uh, Josh Morgerman, provides the, the data, the on-site information. That's all very, very important. So I'm uh, honored, certainly, to be a part of it. But I also want to sort of, I don't have a hat on, but if I did, I'd tip my hat to the founders of this, um, Alex and uh, his crew there at the Urban Science Initiative, Initiative Alex and Tim, Tim Smith, Alex Garcia, and Tim Smith. Um, boy, just awesome. So uh, that's where I'll be heading tomorrow, and then it gets going Thursday and Friday. My talk is on Friday. Now, as I wrap this up, 
I want to tell you, we're going to try to test a couple of things while we're going to this. It's always an interesting time, you know, when we take advantage of every opportunity we can. There's not going to be any, any weather to speak of in Texas, thank goodness. But while we're traveling, I'm going to be flying to Houston and driving down to South Padre. We're going to be using some new technology that we have acquired and do some testing on YouTube Live, uh, not using the iPhone, which makes it in vertical, unfortunately. I don't know why they did that. And also Facebook Live. And this stuff that we've got, and I'll tell you what it is later if it works, uh, does it in the nice wide format like what we have here on this screen. That's the way television and Internet video should be. Your monitor on your laptop or whatever, your iPad, you can, you know, come on, it should be horizontal. I don't watch any vertical movies, do you? So I'm a real stickler for that. We're going to be testing some of this starting on Wednesday between Corpus and South Padre, and we'll see what happens. And hopefully, be able to do a Facebook Live uh, periodically during the conference, maybe even for my talk on Friday. All right? So we're looking forward to that. And again, I am very excited. Where'd my toolbar go? That uh, I've been invited back. It's a real honor to be able to be amongst that group of people down there. And uh, I'm looking forward to it very much so. All right? So that is it from me for today. A lot to go over and I want to say once again, please remember that severe weather risk coming up in the southeast. That's the most important takeaway from today's update. And um, follow the people on Twitter, social media, and elsewhere, and make sure that you stay on top of that situation, please, because we want you back, all right, week after week. And when we do have hurricanes again, got to make sure you're around, okay? Have a great rest of your week. I'll be traveling after today, but then I'll be back. And we'll have another update next week. I'm Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com as always. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again next Monday.